You also see right there, 78, Joseph Barksdale. And what a stud he is as well. Set the LSU record 705 pound squad. A lot of beef and muscle and strength up front for the Tigers. Fullback Dugas back in the game, wearing number 45. Left everyone else looking to the sideline for the play call. Charles Scott behind Dugas. Jefferson wants a bunch. Complete first catch of the day, Terrence Tolliver. Good for 15 and a first down. And I really like that throw right there. That's something we didn't see last week against Vanderbilt. That was a deep comeback, one of those intermediate routes that they're trying to build into their game. Man-on-man -man coverage does a nice job throwing that before Tolliver even breaks. You see a good shot of it here. Terrence Tolliver, six foot five, plants that foot, that ball's out of his hand. Good precision anticipation from the young Jefferson. Keelan Williams comes into the game for the first time. He had a special game a week ago against Vanderbilt. He wears number five. He's in the backfield next to Jefferson now. Another little flip out. This time LaFell can't hang on. A couple of years ago, LaFell had a case of the drop seats. Not so much last year as a junior, and not so much this year as a senior, but that one he could have made the play on. And you can see the disappointment there. He saw the green grass in front of him here. Felt a nice block by his receiver mate, Terrence Tolliver, in front of him. Looked up, just didn't look that ball into his grasp. And that's unfortunate because there was some green grass in front. Repeat first down. They just called a penalty on Saran Black. It's a personal foul, and it's going to cost LSU 15 yards. 15 yards. You always talk about veteran leadership, but a four-year starter in Black just making a mental boo-boo there. And his mom and dad aren't going to be very happy. The son of two preachers. Eric, both mom and dad are, are preachers, and you don't see that very often. Very composed, bright guy. Played a lot of football here. Two-time All-SEC performer. Big penalty for LSU. Another wild tiger formation. Shepard takes the direct snap. Heads off left tackle. And he gets out to the 45-yard line. Uh, they just lost 15. They pick up eight. Pushed out of bounds by Dwight Bentley. He's got great feet, this Shepard. He was the number one dual threat quarterback in America last year. Actually had his high school number retired. That's how good a high school player he was. For 48 touchdowns and 4,000 yards as a high school senior, they retired his number down in Houston. Quite a threat with his speed and athleticism. Third and 19. Jefferson back in the game with five receivers at his disposal. It's actually incorrect. It's actually second and 19. Deep ball behind the defense. Too strong for Chris Mitchell. So now it's third down and 19 for LSU. And there you just sense a little bit of the grumbling of the folks here. That's the kind of play with the speed burners that LSU has. If they just want Jordan to put some more air on that ball, you don't have to be so precise. He's got plenty of arm. His RPMs and velocity is not an issue. It's just developing some of that touch, some of that downfield throw. He'll, he'll learn. You know, again, just his fifth start, and he'll learn with the weapons that he has and the size they have. Just put a little bit of air on that ball and let your guys go up and make the play. And Jefferson did not redshirt a year ago. He is a true sophomore. This is just his second year on campus. Still a babe in the woods. Facing a third and 19 now. Pressure. Wants a bunch. Randall can't hold on. True freshman Reuben Randall was behind the defense. The pass floated a bit, and it's knocked away by Orkies Orini. What a nice play there by Orini. Now, Jefferson did exactly as I said. He, this time he put plenty of air. And Randall is six foot four, the number one receiver in high school last year coming out. And there you see the scrappy Orini. He knows he can't go up and get it, so what does he do? He pulls at the arm of Reuben Randall. I love what Kevin Fuque, the defensive coordinator, said. He goes, if we played in a six-foot and under league, we'd be the best. Got a bunch of scrappy guys, and Orini fits that mode. Little man's disease. And he loves to fight and scrap, and there he pulls down Randall's arm and saves the big play. Fuque called his team a bunch of ankle biters. Loved it. So LSU has to punt it away. 
Fair catch called for and made by Lewis Lee. He changed the catch our breath. A little over seven minutes in the books. Tiger Stadium, a sellout crowd. We're scoreless. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. City never sleeps. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mike the Tiger has made an appearance, not just in his cage just across the way. He's in the building for the first time this season as LSU takes on Louisiana Lafayette. First play of the second possession for Lafayette. And Andres Sales is brought down by Chansey Aguirre. Louisiana Lafayette, 57 miles down I-10 from Baton Rouge, founded back in 1900. Originally, they were called Southwestern Louisiana Industrial Institute. Took away the industrial after a while. In 1960, they became University of Southwestern Louisiana. And ever since 1999, they've been the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And they produced some good football players that went on to the NFL with some big time acclaim. Jake DeLone, Charles Peanut Tillman, Mike Taylor, Brian Mitchell. Not bad. In trouble, Mason has his pass dropped by Luke Aubrey. He was under some serious duress by Al Woods. And as good as Lafayette's group is up front there, you see a shot of some notable alums, some pro bowlers there. And Brian Mitchell, statistically, what did we hear before the game? Second, Second all time. In the NFL in total yards behind only Jerry Rice. Doesn't quite compare to LSU. They've got a high 42 players on NFL opening day roster. Most of any Division I team. On third down, another drop. Almost picked off. Andrew Joseph had to go right through the wickets. And it's going to be a three and out for Louisiana Lafayette and Ricky Bussell. You can see the expression there. Those are just the little things. When you get into these big stadiums and there's 92,000 people in an environment, and, and Joseph was a guy playing junior college football last year, you get in this environment, excuse me, that was Marlon Miller, it's just doing the little things, like catching the football. Out of his own end zone. Spencer Ortego. Oh, picked up by the up back. That's Chet Jones. Risky play. And Jones doesn't get anything on the return. But he keeps the ball from moving. Back across the 50. Time out on the field. Scoreless. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Oh, yeah. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. Battle for the Bayou State. LSU fans getting their uh, their battle gear on. A little face paint, a little body paint. Why not? 6.47 remaining first quarter. Jordan Jefferson wants to throw. Again, he wants the deep ball. Looking for Mitchell. It's picked off. Garen Blunt with the interception heading the other way. And Blunt down at the 24. Be careful what you wish for. LSU fans wanted the bomb. They've been getting a lot of it, and that time it results in an interception. Yeah, I think it's a play caller. Gary Croton wants to gain confidence in Jordan Jefferson down the field. And that's just his first interception this season. And he was just a little bit late. I like the combination route. It was zone coverage. You could see the combination. The two guys there on the safety. That ball just delivered way too late by Jordan Jefferson. It's not a matter of arm strength with Jordan Jefferson. He can throw it plenty far enough. you just got to learn as those guys get further and further away, you've got to get that ball up in the air and anticipate just a little faster. There you see the first pick in 107 attempts. So third possession for Louisiana Lafayette. Pass is high and almost picked off by Chad Jones. Again looking for Ladarius Green. That's now six consecutive incompletions. You can see just a few times today, Mason, he's excited being in here, and this ball is just coming out a little bit hot, a little bit high when guys get their hands on the ball, and the big one was Ladarius Green down the sidelines earlier on a third down. But right now, Chris Mason, just take a deep breath, take a little velocity off, and throw an easier ball to catch for you guys. Blitz is on. Jobis Walker. 
breaks the first wave, picks up three, maybe four. It's going to bring up a third and seven. Harry Riley, among others, on the stop. And I like the aggressiveness by the offensive coordinator, Ron Hudson. He told us you'll see a multitude of formations. You'll see shifts. You'll see lots of different personnel on the field. And I like how he's attacking. Not afraid to throw the ball. Not afraid to throw it down the field. They got a shot tonight. They've got to maintain that aggressiveness. Another ball batted in the air. Incomplete. Dangerous play. Backup right guard Jerron Odom actually got his mitts on it and knocked it to the ground. Otherwise, that could have been picked off. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues later tonight as the Hampton Pirates take on the North Carolina AT Aggies. College football primetime by City on ESPNU and ESPNU HD tonight at 10.30 Eastern time. You've seen a lot of screen passes as well. That's Ron Hudson wanting to slow LSU down, slow some of that aggressiveness by that and speed of that defensive line. And again, watch a little rugby style at times. The Raging Cages will do cutting the ball. Or to go. Good kick. Drives Trendon Holiday back to the 28-yard line. Makes the first man miss. Snaps a couple of ankles and goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Shifty move for the fastest man in college football. A punt of 44 yards, a return of nine. LSU will go back on offense when we come back. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Trendon Holiday with that last punt return, a good one for LSU, giving them starting field position on the 38. He is the fastest man to ever play college football. And it's amazing, Eric, to watch Usain Bolt at what his size is, six foot four, six foot five. And look at little Trendon Holiday. And to watch him run 100 meters, his turnover is something else. He's not been able to get in space. Another one of these weapons for LSU that they'd like to incorporate into their plan just a little bit more. Get green grass in front of him and let him fly. And to watch him run that 100 meters, man, he has some turnover. First down at 10, the gift to Charles Scott, a thousand yard rusher a year ago. His best run of the day gets out to the 45 yard line, tackled by Phil Nevels. Nevels is starting today for the first time this season at safety. He's replacing Chris Richard, who is out, injured himself in the victory a week ago against Kansas State. That's a good look at Nevels, academic All American. Speaks three languages, of course, English, but also speaks Italian and Spanish. found that fairly impressive. Under five minutes to play first quarter. Jefferson throws a bullet complete to the tight end, Dixon. His second catch crosses midfield down to the 43. Aaron Blunt on the stop, but a pickup of 12. And, and that's a nice confidence booster. After an interception, I was curious to see what Gary Croton and staff were going to do. If they're going to put that ball on the ground, and that's a very confident delivery. Watch that ball just zip out of his hand. Richard Dixon, a nice target, six foot three. He'll break the records here for a tight end. Quick hitter again. Dixon with the grab, his third of this first quarter. Across the 35-yard line. Yeah, he already shares the all-time lead in touchdown catches for a tight end. I believe just needed 15 or so receptions coming into tonight. And about 70 yards to shatter all of the tight end receiving records. A very athletic guy has a shot at the next level because of his athleticism. Now he's trying to figure out a little blow to the neck or the head. Brock, but I do wonder, is it ever such a thing that you have too many weapons? Jordan Jefferson's got a great tight end in Dixon. He's got Trendon Holiday, the fastest man ever to play. He's got good backs in Keelan Williams and Charles Scott. And then he's got that whole bevy of great receivers. It's only a challenge for one guy, and that's Gary Croton, the play caller. Head coach loves it. The program loves it. You want to get as much talent in here as you can. But yeah, at times, I think it can be difficult. That's why you got to be firm in your system and what your identity of what you want to do. Option. Keeper for Jefferson. Lowers the head and gets the first down. And I think as well, it's take some leadership from those veteran guys. And Brandon LaFell, the kind of guy that's not going to be barking at the staff, demanding the ball. Charles Scott, we talked about him last week. This week, we're going to the coach saying, can I play a little more fullback? What do you need me to do? When your veteran guys buy in or unselfish, then it takes that whole dilemma away. Trendon Holiday, his first play from scrimmage. He's got the ball. 
drives to the right side. And he's pushed out at the 25-yard line after a gain of about three. Randall Fleming credited with the tackle. Now, I will say this, and I asked both Les and Gary Croton that yesterday in our production meeting about identity. I believe some of the best systems offensively are those that have something they can hang their hat on. They know what they do well, and they do it over and over and over again. And right now with a young quarterback developing around all this experience, I think they're still trying to figure out exactly what they and he does best. To the end zone. Incomplete, but a flag comes down in the secondary. Terrence Tolliver, the intended target. Philip Nevels was on him, but maybe Nevels a little bit too handsy. I think he actually may have even been on the interior receiver there, Brandon LaFell, as he was trying to clear as a double post, trying to clear that space out. A lot of contact in the secondary. Holding number 47 on the defense. That'll be a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. It was on the interior receiver. Grant Fleming held him up. He's a guy they like. He can run. You can see the knee brace on. He's battled injuries. Obvious call there. Smart play, though. The, and Fleming, a smart guy himself, and an all academic performer. That's a tough matchup for any linebacker down the field. He has to grab on to LaFell and save a touchdown. I'm not sure if that's a fair fight. Fleming, 232 pounds, trying to run with one of the top handful of receivers in all of college football. Fresh set of downs. Quick hitter. LaFell with the grab. Makes the first man miss. Touchdown, LSU! Bell dropped his first pass thrown to him, makes that grab and runs it in from 16 yards out for his 16th career touchdown. You know, Les Miles told us yesterday, I want to get in that I formation a little bit more. And when you do that, you make Louisiana Lafayette commit defenders to the box. You leave one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and Brandon LaFell knows what to do against little corners. LSU will take it. Third possession of the ball game. Finally get themselves on the scoreboard. You can see all the defenders. Eight guys in that box. That's just a one-on-one -on -one and a senior receiver. Unlike that swing pass he dropped earlier where he felt all that green grass. He looks that ball in. Still feels Orini, the cornerback, coming up on him and immediately. Look at the decision. No hesitation. The first right when he catches the ball. That's an awareness of what's going on around you and superior athleticism. For Jefferson, his fourth touchdown toss of the season. You'll see a young guy, Eric. He'll catch that ball first. He'll want to make sure he secures the catch. He won't have that feel for what's going on around him. A guy like LaFell, and you mentioned earlier, 58-yard touchdown against these Raging Cajuns. That Jamarcus Russell threw to him as a true freshman. He's played a lot of football, over 1,800 yards receiving. This staff loves him. They love his brains. They love his commitment, the way he practices. And the more football you play, and this is where Jordan Jefferson's going to grow as well, the more you play, the more feel you develop for everything, that big picture going on around you. He could look in and see eight guys around the box. He could feel that corner coming down hard on him. And he saw that instant move and a big-time touchdown. So Louisiana Lafayette will try and get it back. Trail for the first time today. Mulaney fields at the four, drops it, picks it back up. Oh, my! Chad Jones rips him down. The junior safety. Showing you why he's considered to be one of the best hitters in all of college football. Yeah, Chad Jones, he knows how to throw a fastball as well. And look at that collision. 230 pounds, six foot three, dips, gets that helmet underneath the pads. That is a textbook form. That is how you deliver a blow. And challenging to do that, Eric, when you're running full speed on a kickoff to dip those hips and explode through that tackle. That's why Les Miles has some of his better starting players Playing special teams makes a difference. Out in the flat, the fullback, Matt Desimo. 
brother of last year's starting quarterback, Michael Desimo, with the grab and a pickup of 12. And again, I like the call. Aggressive, throwing it on first down. Nice little play action. Now you see the tempo. Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette, trying to get lined up. Establish some tempo. Sales. Pickup of a couple. Charles Sales. Alexander stops at the sixth year senior from Bro Bridge, Louisiana. Bro Bridge in between these two schools, Lafayette, Western Louisiana, and Baton Rouge, about 57 miles to the east. You see you line up, you get in your formation. Hudson on the sidelines. Taking a look at what LSU is doing, getting the appropriate play call versus the defense. Andre Sales gets the handoff on second and eight. And Sales, a hard man to bring down, gets out close to the 35. Let's go back to the studio. Low Galindo, what do you have, my friend? Well, Eric, we have Ole Miss football. Seems like forever that we have not seen the Rebels doing their thing. Back on the field against Southeast Louisiana. Enrique Davis making it 7-0. And Eric, a lot of ground for these SEC teams to make up. USC losing to Washington and FSU right now, leading BYU 13-zip. Thank you, Lowell. Already today, Kentucky a winner over Louisville, Alabama a winner over North Texas. And in an SEC game, Florida knocks off Tennessee and looks at a fairly tight game. Complete first down, Ladarius Green, his second catch of the day. The sophomore tight end with the grab, working against Chris Hawkins. And that's an impressive play. Again, I said in the open, I was down on the field. Ladarius is every bit of six foot six, towered over me. They really liked him. He's actually recruited, had scholarship offers as a basketball player. Said, no, I want to play football. He uses his size and his length, and that time gets out of his break, provides Mason his numbers, and gets a needed, much needed third down conversion. Minute to play first quarter. Sophomore Chris Mason in the gun. Blitz picked up. Passes low, trying to squeeze it to Pierre Hill. You can see the reaction there by Mason. He's a competitive guy. This coaching staff, he had a battle with Brad McGuire this spring and in the fall camp to replace Mike Decimo, as you said, a guy that put up huge numbers for the Raging Cajuns. And they really liked Mason's grit, his competitiveness. He had a shot there, a skinny post versus three deep coverage. Just threw that one a little hard and one hopped it. Sales tries the left side. Not much doing. Eric Coleman on the stop. Coleman may be the key to this defense. They talk to their coordinator, John Chavis. We've got a chance now to see these Tigers back to back weeks. And I told Chavis and Les Miles, I really like that guy. You give me one guy to pick off your defense, it'd be close. Patrick Peterson, Harry Coleman. There you see a good shot of Chavis. Guys that can really, really run and hit. with time intercepted Chad Jones Jones heading the other way out of bounds at the 24 second big play in the last two minutes for Chad Jones and a flag comes down late first interception of the season for Chad Jones and LSU is in business. And that's disappointing if you're Louisiana Lafayette fan because they dialed up the play call. Excellent protection. That veteran group that started 118 games together, they picked up the LSU blitz. That ball just got away from Chris Mason. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 75 on Louisiana Lafayette. That penalty will be enforced at the distance to the goal when we start the second quarter. The first quarter is over. So Chad Jones gets the interception, gets a 36-yard return. And that's got the folks here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, feeling good after a quarter of play.
watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN U College Football Primetime presented by City. 15 minutes in the books. LSU on top of Louisiana Lafayette, seven to nothing, and looking for more, Brock. You know, I talked earlier about you get into these arenas, these big atmospheres with 90,000 people. That's a throw right there that Chris Mason made 10 times in warm-ups. Nice in route here by Pierre Hill. Plenty of space. It's a ball that simply gets away from Chris Mason on third nine, and Chad Jones knows what to do with it. After a personal foul penalty, half the distance of the goal, ball placed on the 12-yard line. Last time with the football, Jordan Jefferson finding Brandon LaFell for a touchdown toss. Trying to make it two in a row. Trendon Holiday in motion behind Jefferson. They pitch it to him. And Holiday, touchdown, LSU! The fastest man in the history of college football making like bullet Bob Hayes and scores a touchdown for the first time here in 2009. And I don't care that I'm five foot five and 161 pounds on paper. I can still make people miss. I can run through tackles. It's one thing to get on that track and run 100 meters, but he shows there he's a football player, can run through a tackle and make people miss. It was during that last timeout that Trendon Holiday was announced, serenaded for being the fastest man in NCAA last fall. He's doing it right now on the field. Trendon Holiday enjoying some yucks with Les Miles. 14-0 lead for LSU. Holiday, his first touchdown here of the season. 11 yards, capitalizing on the turnover. You know, there's some coaches in college football that'll downplay some of their talent. The thing I really appreciate now being here twice, two weeks in a row, and talking to Les Miles, he really likes his guys. He likes what he has at receiver and at running back and up front. He really, you just get the sense, believes in his personnel and believes there's big things ahead for this Tiger team in 2009. Marlon Miller on the return. And Miller brought down at the 16-yard line by a wave of Bayou Bengals. I was telling you earlier about an offense and guys buying in. Watch Brandon LaFell on the left side of your screen come in right there and cut down that defender. When you have your redshirt seniors, your best players, your most talented athletes getting down and chopping down people at their feet, committed to blocking. I don't need to just be the superstar catching the ball. I'll help my buddy look good. I'll help my little buddy Trenton Holiday. I'll open up some space. And when you open up space for Trenton Holiday, as he showed there, he can make you pay. So now this all of a sudden becomes a very important drive for Louisiana Lafayette. And the first pass in this series is incomplete. Trying to get it to Andrew Joseph. Let's go back to the studio for another update. Lowell. Well, Eric, Florida State really dominated the first quarter against BYU, got out to a 13-0 lead, but Harvey Unga responds for the Cougars, capping an 11-play, 80-yard drive, 13-7, Knowles still do lead in that second quarter. Thank you, Lowell. Just getting started here in the second quarter, second down at 10. Pass is caught out to the 22-yard line. Luke Aubrey with the catch. He's one of the two tight ends on this roster. The Raging Cajuns who get a lot of playing time. One thing you'll notice very quickly watching LSU on the back end. You saw Chad Jones do it on a kickoff. Brandon Taylor, Patrick Peterson, Chris Hawkins. Their secondary really tackles well. Third and five. Draylon Booker checks into the game in the backfield for Louisiana Lafayette. He wears number 29. Petrera on the blitz, picked up nicely. Mason underneath, first down and then some. Aubrey, another catch, loses the ball late, but it's going to stay with the Raging Cajuns. That's really nice pass protection. LSU, John Chavis dials up a blitz. He covers up all of those offensive linemen with five guys, allowing Jacob Petrera, the middle linebacker, to run through. But credit Lafayette and their little running back. Andre Sales, unafraid to stick his head in there. He chops down. Contreras gives some time to Mason and yet another third down conversion. 
Four receivers left side, and Mason finds one of them. This is Marlon Miller. And Miller with some Zuzu. Gets out across the 50, and a flag comes down. On the tackle, a flag is thrown. And this could add some yards to the end of the run. You get a little sense tonight, don't you? I think this is what now, the third personal foul. But these schools separated by 55 miles. They know about each other a little bit. I think there's a little talking between these schools. After the play, personal foul, number 56 on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. They call it on Perry Riley. I'd like to welcome in the audience watching West Virginia and Auburn. We hear there's a little bit of weather there. Glad you can join us with Brock Jewett. I'm Eric Collins. On conference game between two teams in the Bayou State. Louisiana Lafayette has never defeated LSU, a team just 57 miles away from Lafayette. Most of those games played well back over 70 years ago. Mason underneath. Incomplete, looking for the tight end, Ladarius Green. Neither of these two clubs scored on their first two possessions. But LSU able to score on a touchdown pass to Brandon LaFell, a 16-yarder. And then immediately afterwards, an interception by Chad Jones converted into a touchdown to Trendon Holiday. That's where we stand, 14-0, just starting the second quarter. Second down, 35-yard line. Chris Mason, sophomore quarterback from Miami, out of the shotgun. Braylon Booker next to him in the backfield. Booker can't hang on. Brock, what's happening? A lot of these passes that are supposed to be fairly conservative play calls have been dropped. Well, do you want to hear from the quarterback? Or do you want to hear from the coordinator? The quarterback's going to tell you, I'm putting the ball in their hands, and the coordinator's going to say, Chris, just take a little bit off. You don't need the RPMs on these short little balls. Give you guys a chance to catch the ball. You see a little bit of a summary today, 94 yards, that critical turnover. And a lot of drops tonight for the Raging Cajuns. And it really is a combination, Eric. It's a combination of that quarterback just putting a little more touch and finesse on those passes, and a little bit of extra concentration by those backs and receivers to look it in. Could be fourth on territory here. Kind of an awkward position on the field. Third and 10 from the 35, complete. First down, Marlon Miller. Second grab of this possession. If they needed 10, they get 11. The one thing you'll see about Mason tonight, he's going to stick in there. He's a tough kid. He does not flush with pressure. He stands in there. And credit Joseph there also for the top of that route. He takes a shot to the legs even. The top of that route, having a feel, and giving his quarterback the opportunity to convert that third down. And wants to throw again. Incomplete. Well, we, uh, we're bordering on something historic here for Louisiana Lafayette. We told you that they've never defeated LSU. They've never really come close. They're 0-21 in 21 games. And in those 21 games, believe it or not, the majority of these games happened way back when, they've only scored one touchdown. Leather helmets. In 21 games against LSU. They've been outscored 957 to 22 over the years. Ouch. Mason gets it out. Complete to Green. Green breaks the first tackle, but can't break the second. Pick up of a pair. Look at that bring shot. Third Look at that shot right there. Sorry to interrupt you, Eric. Look at the shot of the purple around that football. And that's a John Chavis coach defense. You saw it at Tennessee for 19 years, his first year here in Baton Rouge. And one thing about Tennessee's defense, they always flew to the ball. He's preaching that. He wants all this speed that they recruit and bring in here to fly around to that football. Great shot there. Six purple jerseys around the receiver. Trying to keep the drive alive. Third down and eight. They need to get inside the 15. Quick hitter incomplete. Will have been well short if the catch had been made by Lewis Lee. And it looks as if the field goal team will come on. And I like what Chavis is doing. He took a lot of heat after the first game of the year against the University of Washington, converted 11 of 19 third downs, did the Huskies. 
Last week, just two of 12 for Vanderbilt, and tonight doing a nice job of mixing up his looks on third down. Some three-man fronts, some pressure fronts. That time, another pressure look. Some good creativity on third down out of the Tigers tonight. Tyler Albrecht, the toast of Lafayette for his game-winning kick against Kansas State a week ago. Makes it this time as well. He's now two for two on the season. A 48-yarder last week, and this time around, a 40-yarder. So Louisiana Lafayette on the board for the first time here against LSU in 2009. They still trail 14 to 3. If you're watching this on ESPN. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN U College Football Primetime presented by City. Ninth ranked LSU Tigers on top of Louisiana Lafayette by a score of 14 to 3. 1126 remaining here in the first half. First time these two schools have met since 2006. LSU a 45 to 3 winner. Three seasons ago. Brett Barrell kick it off after the field goal made by Albrecht. On the ground. Picked up by Brooks, bobbled a little bit, nowhere to go. That's a disaster. Just down to the 16-yard line, a loss of two on the return. Jordan Jefferson tonight, Eric, starting out a little bit shaky. They want him to progress with the experience around him. You saw the high throw, the interception there, late down the field. But it's how you respond to adversity as a quarterback. And it's really nice when he has six foot three inch playmakers that can take a one yard route and convert it to 15 yard touchdowns, as you saw from Brandon LaFell. LSU has scored touchdowns each of the last two times they've had the football. Started off with a run to Charles Scott, stopped at the line of scrimmage. What he's completing this season. He's just shy of 66% coming into the game tonight. One interception was a call that I liked, a shot down the field. It took their two talented receivers, both Tolliver and LaFell, tried to challenge down the field. Jordan just held on to it a little long and allowed Jaron Blunt, the safety for Louisiana Lafayette, to make the interception in the end zone. Once again, Jefferson by himself in the backfield. Three receivers, wide right, two to the left. Things weren't working out, and for four, the delay of game penalty, Jordan Jefferson calls the timeout, the first timeout of the half called by LSU. With the timeout in the field, let's go back to the studio. Lowell Galindo, what's going on? Well, we're going to give you a little update on Arkansas and Georgia. The Hogs open up with a Ryan Mallett touchdown to Joe Adams. That gave them the 7-0 lead. But Georgia, right back at you. The other Joe, Joe Cox to Aaron White, tied at 7 in the first quarter in Arkansas. Thank you, Lowell. All right, things heating up. We'll watch, watch that. we'll watch that one closely. We're going to be down in Athens next weekend. I'm really interested to see how those two teams respond tonight. Bobby Petrino as a quarterback and Ryan Mallett with a talented arm. Michael Smith, a very gifted wide receiver and playmaker as well. I'm going to keep a close eye on that one. That's a tough test, in my opinion, for Georgia to head into Fayetteville. Bobby Petrino is building that program and really putting some talent again around a gifted quarterback with a big time arm. And people forget Bobby Petrino is considered to be a great offensive mind when he was at Louisville. The minute he left Louisville, they really haven't been the same. Steve Crackthorpe has not had nearly the success that Petrino had, including today, with Louisville losing against the Kentucky Wildcats. Second down and nine. Keelan Williams in the backfield next to Jefferson. Fastball incomplete, trying to get it to Terrence Tolliver. And that's the second time today he's dropped the pass. Sunday afternoon, ESPNU serves, sets, and spikes. Coverage of women's college volleyball. The Kentucky Wildcats take on the LSU Tigers. Women's college volleyball 
on ESPNU Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And one thing we saw last week was a Vanderbilt defense and group that presented some different looks. Gary Croton, he preaches protection first to his quarterback. He really wants to see Jordan handle those protections and those checks at the line of scrimmage. When you empty out, it's often easier in protection. You know you got five blockers and one unaccounted for. And look at the Raging Cajuns providing different looks. Oliver with the catch. Trying to run for the first down, and he comes up short, but there is a flag on the field. It was Dalen McCoy who made the open field tackle, but we're going to have to sort this one out. Picked up five yards. Offside, number 22 on the defense. Five-yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat third down. And what a killer there. You can see Ricky Bustle's face. You get a critical third down stop. You've got LSU then backed up after you get that field goal and some momentum. And that's simply one of those defenders for Louisiana Lafayette that's roaming around. You see them trying to confuse the young quarterback. Third and four. He's put himself in a position, unfortunately, to draw that penalty. Now if you're Louisiana Lafayette, you've got to get this stop to continue that momentum. Out of the backfield. Keelan Williams can't get out of the grasp of Antoine Sanders, the middle linebacker with the squeeze. It's a loss of six. He was our impact player for a reason, a tackling machine. 24 tackles on the season, their best open field tackler. That's not an easy matchup for any linebacker in America. Keelan Williams to throw a little bit behind him. Again, if you're Jordan Jefferson, and this is tomorrow morning, that teaching tape's going to say, Jordan, young quarterback, look at this play right here. You put that ball in Keelan's belly, you give him a much better chance against a linebacker barreling down on him. He had to stop, and then that gives Sanders the opportunity to wrap up Williams. Derek Helton punts this away from his own six-yard line. Lewis Lee, no fair catch called for, and he pays for it. No return, a punt of 38 yards. Louisiana Lafayette will have the ball. When we come back, what will Ricky Bustle's bunch do? You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Also cut the Florida State lead to six. Lowell, thank you so much. All right, a shootout. Fayetteville. Louisiana Lafayette goes back to the run game. Andre Sales with his best carry of the ball game, a pickup of 12, finally stopped by Chad Jones. Now, there have been some drop balls tonight. That's going to lead your quarterback to eight for 22. I really like the plan that Ron, H Ron Hudson's put together. Former offensive line coach, offensive line coach, and offensive coordinator. You can tell in the way they play. They protect well. No sacks tonight. He's done a lot with his formations to get some one-on-one -on -one shots. Impressive stuff. Off tackle run on first down. Booker, nowhere to go. Stop made by Kelvin Shepard. And you may wonder, what, eight rushes now? Actually, seven rushes for 21 yards before that 10-yard effort. You may wonder, why do they keep running? Why, why try to keep pounding the ball between those tackles? Well, that's what sets up your play-action pass. That is what you hope will slow down an LSU team. And as you can see this clock ticking, if you're Louisiana Lafayette, you want to get this game and stay as competitive as you can into the second half. Mason on the run, completes the pass. Lewis Lee with the grab, short game, just a couple. Mason completed his first pass of the ball game, but then started misfiring. Guys were dropping balls lately. He's been much better. He's now six for his last 11. It's closer to the percentage that he wants to be at for the ball game. Third down at six. Raging Cajuns need to get to the 33. You see another three-man front by the Tigers. Caught but short of the first down. Sails out of the backfield, gets four. Patrick Peterson quickly jumps on top of him. 
It's a, it's a big fourth down call here. You just see a three-man rush. Credit Raheem Alim. Anytime a three-man rush and you get a hit on a quarterback, we'll be awfully careful here as well. Eight man in coverage. Patrick Peterson saw that play coming. What a big fourth and three. They're gonna go for it on fourth and two. A little bit too close to punt, a little too far to kick the field goal. Might as well go for it. They call timeout with the play clock winding down. Just trying to draw the Tigers offsides there. Timeout. All right, while they talk it over, we'll take a break. 625 remaining, fourth down and two when we come back. We're watching the SEC on ESPN. And the ninth ranked LSU Tigers being pressured right now by Louisiana Lafayette. Fourth down and two, Raging Cajuns are going to go for it. Option, I don't know. Charles Alexander stuffed him, Mason. and it's going to depend on the spot. I don't think Mason got enough. Charles Alexander. He did. Mason had a full head of steam before Charles Alexander turned him around. I like the call. You know, I, I would have thought maybe a little play action pass and get Mason on the move to run the option into the boundary. I also like the decisiveness of your young quarterback. The challenge here is this big LSU D lineman. You can see they can move. Charles Alexander, the red shirt senior, the old man on that defensive line at 300 pounds. That's the difference. LSU D tackles at 300 can still get down that line of scrimmage. So another look at Jordan Jefferson and the offense for LSU. Sophomore wants a bunch, looking for LaFell. Almost intercepted. LaFell did a good job of ripping the ball away from Melvin White. That should have been Jefferson interception State. number two thrown by Jefferson. And again, just a little bit late. You can tell just watching his tempo at times. When he gets to the bottom of his drop, when you're throwing a deep ball to guys like Brandon LaFell and Terrence Tolliver who can really run, you don't, no matter how strong your arm is, you don't have the chance to hold it at the end of your drop. You need to hit your fifth, see that one-on-one, -on -one, and put that ball in the air. Wild Tiger formation. The true freshman, Russell Shepard, now going to take the direct snap. Here he is. And Shepard does not. Quarterback run gets about four and is brought down rudely. Safety Garen Blunt met him with some force. Some blunt force. Blunt liked being benched last week. He can start at 24 consecutive games. And for the first two weeks of this season, Maurice Roll Jr. had gotten the start, had a couple interceptions. Jaron Blunt, an interception in the end zone tonight, been very physical in this run game. That was the problem. They said he wasn't physical That's enough. That's right. Third down at five. Keelan Williams in the backfield next to Jefferson. Slant caught by Tolliver. That's enough for a first down. Jefferson's pass. You can see in these short routes, he's very, very comfortable. The first two weeks of this season, if you had a throwing chart of where he's throwing the ball, those routes 10 yards and under, Jordan Jefferson gets that ball out of his hands. He's playing with some anticipation. He'll just learn to grow and develop that those throws down the field, he's got to play with the same anticipation. Keelan Williams. Barely able to get back to the line of scrimmage. That defensive front for Louisiana Lafayette, they are outsized by about 30 pounds per man up front. But they're doing a decent job against the Tiger line. And they're one of the better ones in the Sun Belt Conference. 295, 270, 260, and a lot of veterans, redshirt juniors, redshirt seniors. That's a good shot at defensive coordinator Fe Kevin Fuquay. He likes the veteran group. The strength of this defense is those linebackers. 
but at least tonight the Raging Cajuns holding their own at times on the defensive line. Second down and 11. And another good stop by that defensive line for Louisiana Lafayette. They punched him up and the linebacker Jezreel Washington finished off the ball carry. Interesting story with Fuquay. As we take a look at Kevin Fuquay, he's very familiar with the man he's matching wits with. The offensive coordinator for LSU is the man on the left-hand side of your screen, Gary Croton. They work together at Louisiana Tech. So each man knows each other's brain and tendencies very well, you would imagine. Third down and nine. Blitz. Jefferson gets the pass off and gets the first down to Tolliver. Jefferson stood tall in the pocket and throws a strike. Excellent poise, Eric. Feeling that blitz, an unblocked defender coming off of this, his right side. He feels that the entire way. And there you see the velocity. There you see the RPMs that can still be registered out of that arm, even through contact. You really believe he felt that? He knew the blitz was coming? Absolutely. Almost intercepted. Dwight Bentley had that read beautifully, but can't hang on. Now, he didn't feel Dwight Bentley that time. He didn't feel that cornerback driving on that little hitch route. And Bentley, an undersized guy, here you see he read and reacts very well. An outcut by Tolliver from the inside. That's a guess. He's got his zone coverage behind him, but he's reading Jefferson's eyes. And that's a play Bentley has got to try to make to make a difference in this football game. Just an incompletion, second and 10. LSU is not really committed to that running game. Now they'll try an option. Off to Keelan Williams, trying to turn the corner. Gets a pair. It'll bring up a third down and eight. Talked about that front seven being one of the better ones in the Sun Belt. What I'm seeing tonight is that group is active. These linebackers, Xanders and McCoy and Fleming, all three of those guys run sideline to sideline very, very well. And this defensive line, you can see Jordan Top there, he's 290 pounds. And Hall Davis, 93, 265. They're very, very active tonight. And doing a nice job chasing the plays sideline to sideline. Jefferson again finds his man. His third down target has been Terrence Tolliver so far here in this first half. And you want to draw up a third down target from the quarterback's perspective. You'd love a guy who can run. You'd love a guy who's six foot five. And you could see the frame there. Your margin of error is so much greater with a guy of his size. And Tolliver, we've seen early this season, has a real knack and feel in those third down situations. Jefferson keeps it and gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Jefferson on the keeper. As we come on the two minute mark, that was Hall Davis, senior from Port Allen, Louisiana, credited with the stop. And number 95, LaQuincy Williams. No game. Second down, now the Tigers starting to hurry up a bit. They want to get on the scoreboard one more time before we go to intermission. You remember the last time in that I formation, he just threw a little smoke map route one on one. His big receivers outside with these smaller corners. Look at the number of guys that Lafayette continues to commit to that line of scrimmage. Play clock winding down, and Jefferson's going to have to call timeout. That just took all together too long to figure out what was going on. And they burn all that time off the clock. And they use their second timeout. We'll take it with them. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. LSU up 14 to 3. We're almost at the half, so here's what's coming up. We will tell you why Lane Kiffin is not singing Rocky Top all night long. The complete SEC highlights and a shocker in Seattle. USC going down to the Huskies. Eric, that's all coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Lowell. Well, count me uh, for one as being very impressed, even in a losing effort with what the Tennessee Balls did against Florida. Didn't think they had much of a chance at all to even hang post to the Gators, but they did. 
I was excited before this season started with the hire of Lane Kiffin at Tennessee, but I was thrilled when he brought his pops, Monty Kiffin, one of the best schemers defensively. Can't wait to watch that tape and see what he did. Second down and 10. They give it to the first man through. Keelan Williams gets to the 26. Clock continues to move. A pickup of two. It'll bring third down at about six, maybe seven. Up the middle. Tigers don't to be, seem to be in much of a hurry here. Ruben Randall has just checked back into the game. Number two, true freshman, big time receiver, top of your screen. Gary Croton says he wants to get him involved in the offense. Jefferson in trouble, falls down, and this could be disastrous. That could knock him out of field goal range. It's a loss of 10 all the way back to the 35-yard line. Paul Davis credited with the sack along with Derek Dean. And we have a Tiger down. You're going to see an excellent push, not a blitz. Nice little line stunt, and that's Saran Black. That doesn't happen very much for the big left tackle, getting pushed back into Jordan Jefferson. Look at Hall Davis, 265 pounds. He gets underneath Black, pushes Black right into his quarterback. And unfortunately for the Tigers, not just the quarterback, knocked down another of his linemen. Who do you give credit for the sack to? It was Hall Davis who pushed his man back and knocked Jefferson down, but it was Derek Dean who jumped on top of Jefferson. I think all the credit there has got to go to the guy going up against the all SEC performer. And there you see Joseph Marks actually got fell into that play into his lower leg. Good to see him at least walking off on his own power. This is a gritty group from Lafayette. Now this front four not intimidated by Saran Black, not intimidated by 230 pound running backs. They're holding their own tonight. All right, it's fourth down at 16. Balls in the 35. It looks as if LSU actually may go for this. Well, that's the un unfortunate thing, and that, again, is a young quarterback making just his fifth start. You got all upset last week when Terrell Pryor took that sack on a critical drive for Ohio State, knocking them out of field goal range. That'll be yet another coaching, port, coaching point for Jefferson. They're going to take this clock all the way down. You're in field goal range. You can't afford to get a sack and take yourself out of that opportunity. And Les Miles, good use of the clock there, allows it to go all the way down to four seconds. So whatever happens, more than likely, this is going to be the final play of the first half. Now, maybe bring on the field goal unit and try a long bomb of a field goal. Final, Cal 35, Minnesota 21. Well, as they think about it, let's take a look at uh, some other scores from around the SEC earlier this afternoon up in Lexington. An impressive win for Rick Brooks and his, his uh, Kentucky Wildcats. Rick Brooks getting it done over Louisville, four-point win. Alabama flexing some muscle over a Sun Belt team. There's the number one team in the country, the Florida Gators. Just a, only a 10-point win over Tennessee. And just 23 points. And how about Tim Tebow in that game, rushing 24 times. Just 76 yards, 24 rushes for Tim Tebow. And keep your eye on Randall Cobb at Kentucky. He made, he's continued to make play after play after play, really developing into a versatile threat for the Wildcats. This will be a 52-yard field goal. Oh, my! It's good with plenty to spare. Josh Jasper, his farthest of the season by far. His previous long had been 32 yards. This time, he cranks out a 50-yarder and less miles, and the LSU Tigers with momentum as they head into the locker room. It wasn't pretty, but LSU, after 30 minutes of play, doing what they needed to do, they lead Louisiana Lafayette by 14. Now let's send you back to the studio at Low Galindo. College football primetime presented by City after 30 minutes of play. LSU on top of Louisiana Lafayette by a score of 17 to 3 with Brock Hewitt. I'm Eric Collins. The fact that LSU is on top of the ninth ranked team in the country, not that much of a surprise. 
But I guess maybe the big issue for LSU fans, what about the progress for the quarterback, Jordan Jefferson? Well, it's a maturation process, and there's nothing like experience. And everybody's got to remember that Jordan is just making his fifth start. He came out, was a little erratic at times with the ball over, throwing some receivers through late here, deep down the middle, didn't get the ball out on time. But the key to any quarterback, and there you see the instruction, is how do you come back from adverse situations? And he was sharp on third down. They were four of six on third down. He was defiant with the ball. He got the ball into his playmaker's hands. Some good and bad. That's what you're going to see with a young quarterback. He just needs to continue to progress, Eric, as they push into the meat of their SEC schedule. Yeah, I think what LSU has found out and what we've discovered is this Louisiana Lafayette defense pretty darn good. Undersized, but still very effective. What do you call them, scrappy? Ankle biters. I think so. You <laughs> watch them for 30 minutes, and they play boundary to boundary. They're very aggressive. The key to that defense is their linebackers, and that's Antoine Zanders, and you saw him tonight time and again making key tackles. Jared Blunt there with the interception on the ball thrown late down the field, and this is what's critical. When you are undersized like Louisiana Lafayette is, can you make those tackles in the open field? Can you get that pressure on the quarterbacks? And credit their staff, 30 minutes, and they played extremely hard. Well, LSU, they won the uh, opening toss. They chose to defer into the second half, so they'll get the ball led out of the shoot here. Already up by 14. Kickoff, not particularly deep. Coming up and feeling it, Trindon Holiday. He had a touchdown in that first half. And Holiday out across the 40 to the 42. Good starting field position for the Bayou Bengals. A return of 27 yards. Take a look at the first half numbers. Fairly equal across the board, Brock. At Jefferson, nearly 60% completion percentage. Hit those third downs. But I think it was the running the football. And both LSU could not establish any tempo in that area. And Louisiana Lafayette. Did a nice job of containing the run. No big runs. Didn't let anything out the gate. And there you see Jefferson's numbers. Again, good completion rate, nearly 60%. Just need to see a little bit more yards per attempt. Give to the senior, Charles Scott. And Scott, who was fairly quiet in the first half, picks up two yards. Scott was just three for 12 in the first half of play. And I, can, and I can imagine, Eric, some of the conversation at halftime there. There you see Scott, the guy that ran for over 1,100 yards last year and 18 touchdowns, and they've not been able to get this run game going. And I'm sure some of the conversation at halftime, Les Miles talking to Gary Croton, saying, we need to we need to get up tempo a little bit. I want to see more push on the run. I'd like to see Scott. Let's try to establish some of this line of scrimmage and get the run game going. Jefferson hands it again to Scott. Crosses the 50 to bring up third down and short tackle made by Dalen McCoy. McCoy. There's McCoy, junior from Henderson, Texas, bringing down the big fella. Chuck the truck, they call him. McCoy stands at six feet, 228 pounds. Just brought down Charles Scott, who weighs. About 10 pounds more than him. We're talking a linebacker bringing down a tailback. Big boys on offense for LSU. Not so big on defense for Louisiana Lafayette. But effective for the Raging Cajuns. Williams and Scott in the backfield. Little option. Jefferson. Late wow. pitch. Keelan Williams, the first down, and then some. Down to the 38-yard line. 12-yard gain on third down. And if that looks familiar, remember back to the fourth down that Louisiana Lafayette ran early in that first half. Same play. An option play. And how about that feel? Out of your young quarterback, feeling the contact, trusting that his pitch man is going to be there. That takes some guts, Eric. Airborne, midair, to trust that Keelan was going to be there. He was. They delivered the third down conversion. Yeah, if he hadn't got that pitch off, he was going to be down. That was going to be short of the first down. James Stampley comes in at fullback for the first time today. They choose to pass, and it's complete. 
A big fella, Terrence Tolliver, with the grab. He was useful in that first half. Tolliver had four catches for 44 yards in the first half, making five catches now. And again, good anticipation from Jordan. He does a really fine job on these underneath routes. And even that, that's a push, that's a curl route, 12 to 15 yards. Does a nice job of getting that ball out of his hand. And I said in that first half, he doesn't struggle for velocity. Two tight end formation right now for LSU. Carl Scott, tough sled. Gain of one. Charles Scott. And now having watched LSU for three weeks and covering the game last week, if there's one little area as they push into SEC play and they travel to Starkville next weekend, they go to Georgia the week after that. And you see Charles Scott there again, 1160 yards last season. They've got to, they've got to get more running between the tackles. That's an area they've got to continue to grow. And let's watch in the second half and see if they try to establish that a little bit more. Jefferson wants to throw. Pocket collapsing. He gets out of bounds. Backs his way down to the 20-yard line. It'll bring up third and four. This is what's on the slate over the next couple of weeks for LSU. They go to Starkville to take on Mississippi State, then a tough one in Athens against the Georgia Bulldogs. And then October 10th, that's the one that everyone circles on the calendar, the Florida Gators come here to Baton Rouge. In a night game, and we know what the Tigers have done at night, you saw Florida today just score 23 points against Tennessee. Maybe Monty Kiffin provided a little bit of a blueprint for everybody in the SEC and how to slow down that Gator offense. Third and three. Jefferson to the end zone. LaFell, touchdown! It looked as if Jefferson and LaFell had been running that route together for years. Beautifully timed and six more for the Bayou Bengals. And what did Gary Croton say to us yesterday? He said part of the reason that Jordan Jefferson's completing so many balls, he's taken the underneath, and he could have thrown the flat. You see the flat route there, gotten the first down. Instead, he decides to take the shot down the field, and this time, the Tigers connect. And what do they say about Brandon LaFell? All he does is score touchdowns. On the day, two catches, 36 yards, and two scores. Largest lead of the day for LSU, 24-3. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. You're watching ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. LSU on top of Louisiana Lafayette, 24-3. Quarterback's best friends, six foot three and six foot five. Wide receivers that move effortlessly. That's what jumps out to you when you look at both Brandon LaBelle and Terrence Tolliver. You see the production there, the catches. I really like that concept there as well. You motion in, you get to that stack formation, and now you got six foot five Tolliver, six foot three LaBelle screaming downhill at you. And with the way they move, it's no surprise they put up those kind of numbers. So coming out of the locker room, LSU, they take four minutes and seven seconds off the clock and get seven. Short kickoff, Marlon Miller starts on the six. Miller out to the 26, a return of 20. A gut check time now for Miller. 
The offense for Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, only able to muster three points in the first half, even though they did move the football fairly well at times. They had about two runs that went for anything, otherwise just 32 yards rushing. So nice job of spreading the field out. Too many drop balls. Unfortunately for LSU, we've got a man down. It's Danny McCray, one of the backup safeties who sees significant time in some of the, uh, the different packages that they have. Hopefully he's okay. And this is gut check time. You're down 24 to 3 on the road. LSU got that field goal before half, so critical. Coming into halftime and coming out of the break. A veteran team, a well coached team like LSU. They put the throttle down, they get those points. Now it's gut check. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay in this game if you're the Raging Cajuns? Because if you're going to stay in the game, you've got to respond on this drive offensively. Their quarter, quarterback, first year starter Chris Mason. There he is wearing number seven. Get out of Miami, Florida. It was third string a year ago. Quarterback blitz. Peterson almost had him. Pass is complete for a gain of a couple. That was almost disaster. Ladarius Green Mason. saves Mason yes. and gets three positive yards when Patrick Peterson was beating down the neck of Chris Mason. And you asked me earlier if a quarterback can feel that. Yes, you can. And you see there to the ground. That's what makes Patrick Peterson so unique and gifted. Such a physical corner at 6'1 and 211. And you know when else you feel that, Eric? Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Second down at seven. They try and run. And Andre Sales. Breaks out of the pack. Man, he was bottled up. Kept those legs churning. And picks up 12. Can be advantageous sometimes. You see scrolls for the Chargers in the NFL. You see Trendon Holiday here. A little guy that can get lost in that pile. Literally five foot eight listed. Probably a little shorter than that. Does a nice job of keeping those feet alive. And driving for a first down. Much needed first down for the Raging Cajuns. side incomplete Lewis Lee was blanketed good coverage by Chris Hawkins the senior corner ESPN use coverage of college football continues later tonight with HBCU football the Hampton Pirates taking on North Carolina A&T college football primetime by City on ESPNU and ESPNU HD tonight at 10 30 Eastern time Ricky Bustle eighth year head man Louisiana Lafayette looking on Coming off a uh, program best win a week ago against Kansas State. Sales. On the fake, the quarterback keeps it, and Mason rumbles across the 50 all the way down to the 43. And I was waiting for Chris to do this. He didn't do it at all in the first half. That zone read option that you have as a quarterback in that system, he can put that ball in the gut of Sales, or when he feels that defense collapse as they did there, he could tuck it and make the play with his legs. And now they may have caught LSU with too many men on the field. They try the right side and a gain of a couple. I don't see a flag down on the field, but there definitely was an extra man on defensively for LSU. One of the defenders was trying to make it off the field, and I'm pretty sure he was still on. Maybe LSU caught a break right there. No nothing call. We move on, second and six. Mason complete. The tight end green inside the 20. Inside the 15, they're gonna mark it at the 14. And I'll say this about this group up front, a veteran group. When LSU has rushed four defenders, and you see Aliyam again, the defensive end, Aliyam, the only guy getting any push. When they've decided to rush four guys, the Raging Cajuns did a nice job of blocking them up. Green goes to the sideline. Deepest penetration of the day for Louisiana Lafayette. May 
Hawkinson to the end zone. Hawkins, good coverage. He was actually closer to the football than the intended receiver, Lewis Lee. And again, you see a four-man rush, and really the only push up front. The defensive end, Raheem Alim, nice coverage. You'd expect a veteran guy like Hawkins. He's not biting on that double fake. Alim gets a hit on the quarterback. Other than that, protecting well. Critical to not settle for a field goal down here this time, Eric. Mason keeps it and gets eight. Once again, good ball fake, and the quarterback gets close to the first down marker. And in order for a defense to bite this hard, you can see a nice job again by Mason, really riding that running back. What I mean by that, he puts that, look at him, he puts that ball right into the chest of Sales. That's what influences those ends and linebackers, allows him that room to make a play. And now on third and two, Sales powers forward and gets the first down. Louisiana Lafayette has scored a grand total of one touchdown in 21 career games against LSU over the years. Knocking on the door here. Sales again drives the middle down to the half yard line. And what a credit, we said before this drive, it's gut check time. And what a credit, Ricky Bustle and his staff here. These kids responding, knowing they're up against it, down 21. Sales stopped just short. Man, I don't know if you can get closer than that. Yeah, this is fun. Third and goal now. Do it again. Third and goal. Ball at the half inch line. No. Kelvin Shepard jumped over the pack and stopped the quarterback, Mason. You got to go for it now. This is tough duty down here. You get near and then around that three-yard line. You're talking about beef. You're talking Al Woods, Charles Alexander, 300, 315. In the middle of that D-line, these defensive ends. A limbs 265 on the other side. A Gary and Edwards, both 265. A lot of beef down here to push the pile. Sales can't get it. Ball actually comes loose. It's LSU football. Harry Coleman in the mix. Harry Riley in the mix. And the Bayou Bengals stiffen. I think the 92,000 like that defensive stance. That's what defense for LSU is all about. Four downs. No chance for Louisiana Lafayette. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN U College Football Primetime presented by City. 90,000 plus. We just saw defense at its best performed on the goal line by LSU. And that's the loudest we've heard it in two weeks here. You can see the impact that 90,000 people have on that game. Made life difficult. What a backbreaker for Louisiana Lafayette. Four chances, nothing doing. Keelan Williams in trouble in the end zone. They're going to say he got out. Oh, man, the Raging Cajuns want a safety, and I think they've got a good argument. No single. They're going to say Keelan Williams got out. Lost the order. Second down and 11. At the one. And that's an awfully tough view there. This will be a better shot here, Eric. And they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. If that ball crosses. What a mass of humanity. Tough to tell there. I think LSU may have caught a break there. 
Jefferson wants to throw out of his own end zone, and it's caught. Tolliver with the grab. That ball was almost picked off by Ortiz Orini. And he's upset, and he really should be, because he reads this play, and again, look at the eyes of Jordan Jefferson. He stared that hook route down, and that's a play that Ortiz has to make. He saw it coming. He jumped the hook route. And maybe just the size, the, the rare six foot five inch frame that he's got to try to come around. The only difference between that not being a pick six. So LSU gets away from the shadow of their own goal line out to the 13 yard line. Keelan Williams. Wouldn't be surprised if Williams. Is featured on this drive. I saw this the whole way, just a one man route. You see Tolliver, you'd like to see him as a receiver never stop like that, especially down by the goal line. You're going to be taught. DJ McCarthy, his wide receiver coach, will tell Terrence, you have got to come back to the football. You can't sit and stop on that route. Very fortunate there for the Tigers that Arini could not come up with that play. Steady diet of Keelan Williams. This time tripped up at the ankles. He's going to bring up a third down and short. LaQuincy Adams, one of the reserve defensive linemen, makes the stop. And Davis. This has been the third week now, Eric, when you've seen LSU not really able to establish that line of scrimmage in the run game. They've been tough. They've done a nice job with their option. I think they've been innovative with different formation and getting people involved and lots of different guys that touch the football. But at the end of the day, when they get into SEC football, they have got to be able to find a way to run the ball between the tackles. Power formation. They try Charles Scott. And Scott, Charles Scott Perry. is going to have it up for the first down, you would assume. They're going to say it is indeed a first down for the senior. Well, log on to Facebook today, search ESPNU, and become a fan. Post your best tailgating photos and comments, and we may use them on Inside the Polls Monday at 6 p.m. on ESPNU HD. First and ten. Second first down of this drive for LSU. Again, that power backfield. Scott leading the way for Keelan Williams. And Williams, his best run out to the 39-yard line. Pick up a 14. And there's a little bit of a crease again between the middle of that line. And if you're a Tiger fan, you want to see develop because when you get into those games against Arkansas and Georgia and Florida, you need to possess the football. You need to be able to establish that run game. That was a hole that you like, and Keelan Williams explodes through it. Rock quite possibly the bigger, more physical LSU team wearing down Louisiana Lafayette. Keelan Williams on that runoff tackle. A flag is down in the backfield. Do you see Louisiana Lafayette tiring, being worn down? You're starting to see a few more hands on the hips, but you'll see again a lot of shuttling of players. There's a good shot. I think anytime the hands go on the hip, hips like that, a bit of an indicator. Kind of like those basketball players. I know you call a lot of basketball. Anytime those hands go on the shorts, in basketball, hands on the hips and football. There were two fouls, illegal formation, five men in the backfield on the offense. That penalty will be declined. Holding number 65 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. And it's really a credit to the third downs of LSU. That's how you want to wear out a defense. Yes, you can pound the football and establish the run. But you've also got to find a way to convert third downs. LSU six of nine tonight. A lot of those through the air. Some on the option pitch that we saw on that first drive of the second half. Probably been Jordan Jefferson's strength, really, the last few weeks, his production on third down. After the penalty, first and 20, ball is dropped by Tolliver. Would have been a tough chance, but I'm sure he's going to tell you he should have made that play. Sunday afternoon, ESPNU serves sets and spikes coverage of women's college volleyball as the Kentucky Wildcats take on the LSU Tigers in SEC action. Women's college volleyball on ESPNU Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. What hurt LSU in that first half, a couple of drives were penalties, personal foul calls, some penalties they could not overcome. 
Let's see here at second and 20 if they can find a way to overcome that holding call. A little flip out in the flat. Keelan Williams dodges the first man, pushed out of bounds. And again, Eric, it's a little thing. I pointed this out in the first half. It was a pass to Keelan Williams on a third down where Antoine Zanders made the play. But you look at that pass, and you look at ball placement, and it's a swing pass, and it's a short route, and it may just seem like a little detail. But any time on those routes to your running backs, when you can give them a chance to catch and run, when they don't have to stop, they don't have to lose their momentum, you give them such more opportunity for success. Ball placement critical, even on those little short swing passes to your backs. Third and a bunch. LSU needs to get out to the 49-yard line to keep this drive alive. Pressure. Jefferson's going to try and run for it, and he's got no chance. He's wrapped up at the 35-yard line. Grant Fleming makes the tackle. Jefferson, carry ball. Ball came loose late, but LSU retains possession. They'll have to punt. I think that was Hall Davis again. Give him some credit. We saw earlier Hall Davis drive the big all-SEC performer, Saran Black, into the backfield. Just a three-man rush that time by Louisiana Lafayette. You see Jefferson a little bit shaken up. You also see Les Miles telling him to get down and slide, Jordan. I don't need any more extra contact. But Hall Davis, that defensive end, doing a nice job against Saron Black. Mano, mano, e mano. And again, getting into that backfield and forcing the scramble. Well, LSU, if they so choose, they could make this the last play of the third quarter. But they don't let the play clock wind down. Instead, they kick it away. High spiraling kick. Lewis Lee makes the fair catch at the 20-yard line. A punt of 46, no return. We'll take a timeout when we come back. We'll talk about some of the national championship winning coaches here in the SEC. Big names to talk about. For the ninth ranked LSU Tigers on top of Louisiana Lafayette 24 to 3. Let's take a look at our quest for the coaches trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. A full four. Of the 12 coaches in the SEC have won national titles in their careers. Pretty impressive stuff. And then when you look at the next tier down, and it's hard to say tier down because you've got some phenomenal coach coaches as well, like a Bobby Petrino and a Houston Nut. Talented coaches in this conference, not just athleticism and great athletes, but good guys in charge of these programs. Nine seconds remaining, third quarter, and this play is a bust, a big time bust. Raheem Alim just opened sailing, and he busts up that play for a loss of five. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. LSU playing very well. They're the only team that scored in the third quarter. That impressive defensive stand. When we come back, the final 15 minutes, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. You're watching ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. We've reached the fourth quarter. This battle for the Bayou State LSU on top of Louisiana Lafayette by three touchdowns. 24 to 3 is our score. I think a lot of people in this 93,000 plus here at Tiger Stadium are surprised at the fact that it's still this close. Louisiana Lafayette has actually played fairly well despite the score. But they're running out of time. 15 minutes remain. Second down at 15. Quarterback Chris Mason throws underneath. There's that tight end again. Ladarius Green sinks off a tackler and gets out to the 25. I think we've seen enough tonight from Green to say he could play in this conference every weekend. Just a nice target. It's six foot six, nearly six foot seven. Is a real feel for the game. That's man coverage that time. He beats Jacob Cotrera on a little shallow crossing round, then has the strength to even break that tackle of the LSU middle linebacker. Two unbeatens. Louisiana Lockett coming off a, uh, a real high a week ago, knocking off Kansas State, taking on an LSU team ranked ninth in the country. Third down play, nobody home. 
Mason just throws it away as he's under duress. Mason's pass. And I imagine the punt team will have to come on. Good defense played by John Chavis' defense. And again, just a well-designed, well-conceived play. That's right over your little five-foot-eight running back. Andre Sales not able to get his helmet. Look at that shot. That's what you do when you miss a tackle. You come back that next play and you respond accordingly. And Katrina does a nice job of leaping over the little back, flushing the quarterback, and forcing the punt. Another punt, this one not so good. Trinden Holiday fields it on the run, and he spun down at the 49-yard line. Just 30 yards on the punt and a four-yard return, making a net of 26 yards. When we come back, LSU back on the offensive side of the ball. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. LSU on top of Louisiana Lafayette, 24 to 3, 14:06 remaining. Time now for tonight's ESPNU Campus Connection, a program designed to get the pulse of the campus through student-generated content. It's 92,400 screaming purple and gold lunatics breathing down your neck. A live tiger waiting just outside the visiting team's locker room and four musical notes that can send a chill down your spine. That's when you know you're in the most passionate arena in college football. Because when the sun goes down and those lights come up, welcome to a Saturday night in Tiger Stadium. Because only the strong survive in Death Valley. For ESPNU Campus Connection, I'm Hobie Arty. Thank you, Hobie. Les Miles knows what uh, this is all about. Les Miles has never lost a Saturday night game here at Tiger Stadium in total, dating back to the Nick Saban days. LSU has won 31 straight Saturday night games here at Tiger Stadium. Impressive stuff. First down at 10. LSU, they want to throw, looking for a big play. Try on the right side, complete. Ruben Randall, his first collegiate catch. Ruben, where you been? The true freshman, a big time recruit out of Bastrop, Louisiana. And we got Brandon LaFell, six foot three. You got Terrence Tolliver, six foot five. They can run like the wind. Oh, let's just go recruit a kid who's six foot three, 200, the number one wide receiver by many publications last year coming out of high school. And he too showing, even at six foot three, with that frame, can get in and out of his break. Nice comeback, solid completion for Jefferson. Another one of those true freshmen in the Wild Tiger formation, Russell Shepard with the football. And Shepard is blasted, stays on his feet, now tries to back out of it. Brock, you can just tell that Shepard was a big time player. He doesn't think he can't do anything. And it may just be that little bounce in the step. It's been a couple times now he's taken that direct snap and immediately he just gets that little bounce. Remember Michael Vick used to do that at Virginia Tech. He'd catch that, that ball or he'd finish his drop and he'd have that little bit of a bounce at the end before he explodes. Plenty of quickness out of number 10. Second down, nine, 35-yard line. Just a pickup of one. Jefferson back under center. Charles Scott, the fullback. He's Scott playing tailback right now, and they fake it to him. Jefferson has his arm hit incomplete. Looking for Mitch Joseph. Let's go back to the studio for an update on the Auburn Tigers. Lowell. Yeah, because those LSU Tigers are looking pretty good. We'll see if Auburn can follow suit, but they have work to do because West Virginia getting it done with Jared Brown and the little man, Jock Sanders, with the touchdown. WVU with a 21-10 lead over on ESPN2. Thank you, Lowell. And Brock, you and I saw Auburn a couple of weeks ago, and we were very impressed. Uh, with their club. I think Gus Malzahn is going to continue to score some points next three quarters of that game. I wouldn't be surprised. They continue to put lots of yards and points on the board. Charles Scott gets the run on third and nine and just carrying defenders. Grant Fleming can't bring him down until he's about a yard shy of the first down marker. It's going to be a fourth and one and you'd imagine LSU's is just going to go for it. Already up by 21 points. What's the call here, Brock? Well, anytime you see the beef coming in, you see 83 and 47 and 45. Pretty good indicator. Those aren't 19s and 88s and skinny little receivers. It's going to be a power football play. A 
Richard Dugan, number 45, the fullback, in front of Charles Scott. They give it to Scott, and he's brought down from behind. LSU's not going to get it. Good defensive play. Dalen McCoy busted that play up. Kevin Fuquay's team, they stiffen. And it's not all about size and strength. You saw Duga come in the game at 270. They try to run behind that double wing there. And look at the quickness on the backside. You got to cut off those backside linebackers. Dalen McCoy shows what he's got in his six foot, 228 pound frame. It's a nice job of chasing that play down from the backside. I think a compliment is defensive coordinator. What did he say about Dalen McCoy? Oh, you'll like him. He's just a little intense knot of muscle. I think if I'm a linebacker, I don't mind being called a yeah. muscle knot. Louisiana Lafayette running out of time. Pass incomplete, thrown behind Luke Aubrey. Mason's Brock, can you give me your, uh, your report card at the beginning of this game? We were talking about that offense for LSU. Jordan Jefferson and the importance of trying to get more big plays. LSU's got a 21-point lead, but if they... Have they earned a check mark in that category in your eyes in terms of making the big plays they're going to need when they get to SEC action? I think it's very typical of a young quarterback. You see some really good things. His touchdown passes. He's very decisive. He's thrown some nice comebacks, some intermediate routes tonight. But I'd credit Louisiana Lafayette in really stopping the run game. They've had a couple creases where they've given up some chunks of yards. But by and large... Eric, it's been a night of a lot of one and three, and even there, a fourth and one opportunity where you figure you're going to get that run in the football. And I think some of the consistency in the run game, if you're going to develop a Jordan Jefferson, and he's got plenty of weapons, and you've seen some things tonight, again, some good and bad, that comes with a fifth start of a career. But if he's really going to grow and develop in this SEC, they've got to continue to find a way to consistently run the football. Third down at 10. Mason feels the pressure. Completes it underneath. That's enough for a first down. Sails out of the backfield to pick up a 14. When LSU has had success defensively on third down, they've been pressuring them. They've been getting after Chris Mason this time. They rush four, and again, a nice pocket. Mason's able to step up against the soft zone, allow those routes to get downfield, throw the check down. And I like what we've seen from Little Sales tonight. He's a gritty little guy, unafraid to stick his head in there and get downhill. This time they give it to Sales between the tackle. Brock, going back to your last thought, I guess you could make the argument, if, if Jefferson is not going to be a big play waiting to happen, I guess you could rely on your defense. Have you seen enough? of this defense for LSU to lead you to believe that they can win games consistently in the SEC on the back of their defense. I sure like the back end of their defense. Their linebackers in, in secondary, Eric, has impressed me now for, for three weeks, how physical they play. You don't see many missed tackles. I'd like to see a little bit more from their front four. You see a lot of Raheem Alim in the backfield. He's the guy getting constant pressure. The SEC Defensive Player of the Week. But you've not seen a lot from the rest of the defensive line. Part of that, you know, Lazarius Levinson is out. He's missed his second consecutive game. You've got redshirt freshmen and Edwards and Aguirre playing. And who do we have down here? Is this that is Woods? Josh Downs. That's Josh He's Downs. Down That's field. a true freshman. And there's a good shot at Drake Nevis. You've liked what you've seen from him. And Charles Alexander made a big play on fourth down tonight. They like to rotate these defensive tackles through. And Josh Downs, the kid that's down, is actually the true freshman. 275 pounder as well from Bastrop, Louisiana. That four man rotation. I'd, I'd just like to see a little bit more in the pass rush from them. They've been stout to a degree and for a large part of the against the run. But again, when you get into the heart of the SEC and you're going to take on Tim Tebow, right, and you're going to go to Georgia and you're going to face some really physical groups that can run the ball. And also pass block, you've got to get a little more production, I believe, yeah, out of this yeah. front four. And there is room for improvement with the defense for LSU. Last year, they were ninth out of the 12 SEC teams in total defense. They were ninth out of the 12 SEC teams in scoring defense, allowing 24 points a game. And they were 11th, next to last in the SEC, in pass defense. So a lot of talent, but it didn't come together last year. Maybe that's why John Chavis, the new defensive coordinator, 
Second down at seven. Mason underneath passes complete. Andrew Joseph with the grab crosses the 50. That'll bring up third and short. Busy day in the SEC. Finals from this afternoon. Kentucky holds off Louisville. Alabama all over North Texas of the Sun Belt and a little bit closer game than most people thought Florida slips by Tennessee only winning by 10 everything else under the lights Mississippi State and Vandy playing a dogfight low scoring game in Nashville Bulldogs up by just six third down and two Sales is tripped up. Kelvin Shepard, the all-everything linebacker, stops him fourth and short. And again, that's the back seven of this defense. These linebackers that have tackled really well ever since that Washington game. There are a few missed tackles. You know, and you can be as critical as you want on a defense. And I'm being a little bit nitpicky with that front four, Eric, because at the end of the day, look at the points on the scoreboard. And after three quarters, under 200 yards of offense. So compared to some of the production from last season with big plays and lots of points, they continue to shut down for a large degree, these Cajuns. On fourth down, they get the first. Lewis Lee with the grab. Ends up being a fairly significant game. Pickup of 10 inside the 40. Give it to Louisiana Lafayette. They haven't uh, taken their ball and gone back home. They're still competing, trying to get that touchdown on the board. Yeah, and they're going to be disappointed. They drove the ball the last time all the way down the field, right to the one-yard line with a first and goal situation, unable to punch it in. And they're scrappy. There's no doubt about it. Ricky Bustle, the reason they beat Kansas State last week, it's a scrappy group that plays hard. The throw on first down. Pass intercepted. Second pick of the day, Chad Jones. The safety still on his feet, out to the 44-yard line. Jones with a big day. Picks off Mason for the second time, returns this one 24 yards. Now you'll take that every week out of Chad Jones. We've seen him lay some big-time licks on receivers. This week it's been all about ball hawking. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the best performances in the SEC this afternoon. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. LSU, they hope they have this one in the bag after the interception by Chad Jones. They've got the football and a 21-point lead. A couple of games already in the books. These are the stars from earlier today. Alabama took care of North Texas very easily. Jevin Sneed, the bye last week. He's healthy. That team's stricken by the flu. You see Derek Locke, an enormous day. And Tim Tebow, 191 yards, carried the ball 24 times today. That leaves me to believe Monty Kiffin said, you know what, Tim? You're going to have to beat us with our your legs. We'll, we'll lock down on your receivers. Maybe a little bit, like I said earlier, of a, of a game plan for everybody else in the SEC. When you've tried to slow down Florida, how do you slow them down? Tennessee did a nice job of it today. Let's go to the studio in Lowell Galindo. Well, Eric, this really comes as no surprise, but the Ole Miss Rebels starting on a runaway from southeast Louisiana. Cordero Easton, eight yards and in. Ole Miss over southeastern Louisiana, 31-3 in the third quarter. Southeastern Louisiana and Hammond, Indiana. Oh, just check that. Hammond, Louisiana. There is a Hammond, Indiana. Charles Scott still on his feet, down to the 32. His most impressive run, a pickup of 19. That's a lot of what you saw last year out of the senior. 1,164 yards, 18 touchdowns. What a nice spin move. When he gets that 230 pounds going downhill against those safeties, that's advantage LSU. Quick pitch and catch, LaFell. Already with two touchdowns today. Cut down inside the 15. First down on the Tigers. 
And what a tremendous example here. Remember earlier I was talking about those swing passes and putting it on those guys' numbers, giving them a chance to use that momentum and that speed they're gaining. It's not a running back. That time it's Brandon LaFell on a little swing route, but the same concept. When you throw those balls accurately with the athleticism and speed these guys possess, you give them a chance to then make further plays down the field. First catch today for LaFell that didn't result in a touchdown. Scott probing. Lowers the head, stays on his feet. Out of bounds at the four. He is one tough hombre. You asked me earlier in the third quarter whether or not Louisiana Lafayette was wearing down. Listen to this. Zarini doesn't want to try that one again. The cornerback for Louisiana Lafayette got the business end of a forearm shiver. Couple weapons you have. You have Keelan Williams. He's 220 pounds. Scott's 230 pounds. Both seniors been around here, hungry to put last season behind them and hungry to get this run game going. Jefferson on the keeper. Quarterback keeper. It's probably a technique play there, Eric, where they have a run play called. Jordan Jefferson sees a gap in that defensive line, has the opportunity to tap that center's rear end, snap it, I'll follow you in. Not quite able to punch it across. Nice little second half here by Scott. 50 yards on nine carries, 62 for the day. And that's not a good sign. Jefferson waving to the sideline. I think he may need medical attention. Jefferson's now down on the ground. Saw Les Miles earlier on one of his scrambles telling him to get down. We need you this entire season. Try to avoid those hits. So Jarrett Lee is going to have to come in and take this next snap. Jefferson's going to come out, come out for at least a play. Jarrett Lee got uh, the bulk of the snaps a year ago, playing as a redshirt freshman. I guess you could call it an up and down freshman year. A lot of downs. And he still is a very capable quarterback now with a, a good amount of experience. It did look like a cramp there as Jefferson is walking off the field. Look at the numbers here. 17 rush, 17 pass in the first half for LSU. This second half, I told you at halftime, they want to establish that run. 19 runs to eight pass. And I'm going to imagine with the backup coming in, this is going to be a run play. And I imagine wrong. Touchdown, Charles Scott. So Jared Lee comes off the bench cold and throws himself a touchdown pass. And that, my friend, is why I am not a defensive coordinator. The, the backup comes in. You can see what Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette does. They went all out thinking it's going to be a run. Nice call, Gary Croton. Little play action pass. And those backup quarterbacks love to come in and throw a little touchdown pass. Now Charles Scott scored 18 touchdowns rushing a year ago. That's his first yes, touchdown yes, here in his senior season. Timeout on the field. 5.48 remaining in this one. Touchdown to Charles Scott. Makes it a 28-point lead for the Tigers. LSU Tiger fans still enjoying themselves here in Death Valley. 31 to 3 is our score. LSU on top of Louisiana Lafayette with Brock Hewitt. I'm Eric Collins. I guess the saying is slow and steady wins the race. LSU has not been spectacular for the most part, but they've been just steady enough to open up this one. And how much do we hear from Les Miles about toughness? We're going to be a physical, aggressive, tough football team. And you've really seen that the last two weeks. They went out on a long trip to Seattle to open the year. I think everybody was wondering about. Washington being 0 and 12 and why was that a 31 23 game well Washington took care of the number three team in the country I guess they could play a little football up there 
But you also saw LSU now the last two weeks start to reestablish themselves defensively. They're physical. They're fast. They're back into their defense. Tackles really well. And Jordan Jefferson's growing. He's growing as a quarterback. He's made some plays tonight down the field with his receivers. And a good time for them as they get ready to push into SEC play. Well, everyone wants to know. You've seen LSU for the last couple of weeks. Will they be your pick to come out of the SEC West? We're going to talk about that after this kickoff. Down to the five yard line. Marlon Miller still on his feet. And Miller stretches out to the 33. So there you go, Brock. The, the floor is yours. Who are your picks in the East and in the West? I think in the East, it doesn't take a rocket science scientist to pick those Florida Gators. Although Tennessee and Lane Kiffin and Monty Kiffin in particular played them very tough. I still think in the West, and Les Miles told us yesterday in our production meeting, this is the best the SEC, SEC West has been in his five years here at LSU. It's deep. It's deep. There's many teams that, that could win this championship, whether it's Ole Miss, whether it's LSU. I still believe it's going to go through Alabama. When you have Terrence Cody, when you have, you're so strong defensively up the middle, a D tackle and linebacker. Still got to find a way to beat them, and LSU has to travel to Alabama later this season. New quarterback for Louisiana Lafayette, Brad McGuire. McGuire hands off to Yobis Walker. Walker gets his first carry of the day. Yeah, I think that may be key. You said it. The SEC West goes through Alabama. Literally, it will go through Alabama when LSU has that big tilt in Tuscaloosa November 7th. You know, and there you've got enough players offensively. I like Ingram as the running back. You've got the young kid, Trent Richardson. He's a, he's a banger. And Julio Jones, we know, is explosive down, down the field. They also, even though he's older, much older than Jordan Jefferson, Greg McElroy, their quarterback, is young and experienced. Yeah, this is what it is the rest of the way for LSU. They got that tough stretch of games next week at Mississippi State, and then it really just kind of gets to uh, gets beefy in Athens to take on the Georgia Bulldogs at Florida. Florida's a team. Now, I think Florida's here, actually. I'm pretty sure that Florida's a night game here. You're right. It is a night game here. So Florida will be here. The nice thing, like Les Miles said to us yesterday, that bye could not come at a better time. When you ramp up, and this is a little run now, they'll finish – Louisiana Lafayette up tonight, and it will be a three-week season up to that bye. You're going to run up and push those guys hard. A very physical game. You know it's going to be here in Baton Rouge, a night game with Florida. And you get that bye week to get healthy and regroup for yet again more of a run into the SEC. You know, we talked about LSU. We've been here the last couple of weeks. Next week, be sure to follow us next Saturday for ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. We'll be in Athens, Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs, they will host Arizona State out of the Pac-10. Catch all the action next Saturday at 7 Eastern time on ESPNU. A little bit of a surprise to me. If you were to ask me about Georgia this season, I would say, well, they're going to be a little bit young offensively. Joe Cox, a fifth-year senior, but they're good up front. But they're going to play some defense Gosh, in the last couple weeks defensively. Wow. They have given up some points. Able to overcome that last week tonight in a shootout in Fayetteville with Arkansas. That's the second straight possession for Louisiana Lafayette that has resulted in John Downs being helped off the field for LSU. That's Josh Downs, the true freshman, being tended to. So under five minutes to play, clock is running. Brad McGuire remains in the game at quarterback for the Raging Cajuns. Movement, maybe a free play for Louisiana Lafayette. It results in a whole bunch of nothing. LeVar Edwards, who I believe was the man who jumped offside, is the man who makes the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Look at that frame. That's a redshirt freshman, six foot four, 270 plus Offside, pounds. Side, number 89, 89 on the defense. It'll be a five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. And like John Chavis, he said to us, both of his redshirt freshmen, LeVar Edwards, Chancey Gary on the other side, they're not young anymore. They're getting, they're getting valuable reps. Zarius Levinson is out. These guys are going to have to improve, and they continue to improve. Number ninth ranked team in the country, LSU, trying to impress and move to 3 0 on the season against Louisiana Lafayette. And they've done that. They lead 31 3. Coming up at the four minute mark. 
Maybe a broken play. McGuire just takes it himself and gets a yard. Or maybe. Well, you can see the difference there in timing, Eric. When you run that zone read option, there was a real good shot earlier in the game, a good shot of Ricky Bustle there of Chris Mason really putting that ball in the belly of that running back. It's such a timing play. And we talk about the SEC and Tim Tebow today again rushing the ball 24 times. No one does it better than him. You want to see textbook how to run that play. He'll put that ball in the belly, belly follow that running back a yard to draw that defense, pull it out, and run downhill. Third down at four. Raging Cajuns don't seem to be in much of a hurry. Design quarterback draw. And McGuire gets the first down. Brock, I'm always curious to get your thoughts as a McGuire. former quarterback. Right now, Louisiana Lafayette, they're running out of time. Is it more important to get your backup quarterback, Brad McGuire, playing time? Or would it be in the best interest of your program to keep your starter in there and continue to allow your starter, Chris Mason, to get experience against this big time defense? I think at this point, Mason's taken a lot of blows tonight. Took that last hit on the interception. Jai Eugene came in and knocked his arm, causing the interception. Awesome. And it was such a close race between these two with Mason and McGuire. The game's obviously out of hand. I don't mind getting your backups some repetitions here. And LSU doing much the same defensively. They're getting a chance to put some of their backup players in because you know eventually you're going to have to count on some of these guys. Injuries are going to be a part of the season. This is Walker. All the way out to the 37-yard line. Walker. Yobis Walker, redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas. Believe it or not, he's one of their bigger running backs. 5'11", 205. Stephon also Keep a close eye this year. It typically happens when you cover a team and you get close to them this week, really studying them. Be really anxious to see how this veteran group who played well tonight defensively, very scrappy, an offensive line when LSU rushed four that seemed to handle them. Be curious to see just how Louisiana Lafayette handles that Sun Belt Conference and whether or not they can take the next step. Three of the last four years, this program's won six games, been bowl eligible, not able to get to a bowl. This year with the senior group up front, a lot of veterans in their defense. Will Ricky Bustle will be able to get those raging Cajuns to a bowl game? Yeah, last year, Louisiana Lafayette, one of just four bowl eligible teams that were not invited to bowls. We're six and six, but we're home for the holidays. Champion of the Sun Belt gets the automatic invite to the uh, RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Last year, the representative was Troy. Quarterback hands it off. This time, Matt Dupree gets his first carry. A minute and a half remaining in this one. ESPN News coverage of college football continues later tonight. The Hampton Pirates taking on North Carolina A&T. The Aggies, college football primetime, presented by City on ESPNU and ESPNU HD tonight at 10.30 Eastern time. HBCU football coming your way. LSU has allowed just one touchdown in 21 games against Louisiana Lafayette. They don't want to give up number two here. Quarterback McGuire is stoned on third down. It'll bring up a fourth down. Before we get to fourth down, let's go to the studio. Lowell Galindo. Yeah, Eric, Arkansas has opened up the second half by taking the lead. Ryan Mallett showing off the gun. Pump fake and finding Greg Childs. That leads to a hog score. They're up by one early in the third quarter. Thank you, Lowell. I believe that was Mallett's fourth touchdown pass of that game. 20 seconds remaining. It's a fourth down and two. They run out of time. They might as well throw it to the end zone. McGuire. It's caught. And that'll do it. 
Lewis Lee makes the grab, but the clock gets triple zeros. And the LSU Tigers, they do what they need to do. They win going away. 31-3 to the final score. Louisiana Lafayette, they were game, but in the end, just too much Bayou Bengals. Too physical, too powerful, too strong. That second half, I thought Les Miles established that run game that he knows he's going to need starting next week in Starkville. They take care of business, move to 3-0. and so next week, Louisiana State on the road in the SEC to take on Dan Bolin and Mississippi State. Once again, our final score, LSU 31, Louisiana Lafayette 3. Up next, we'll send you to our Sports Center U studio. More information on this one, log on to ESPNU.com. We are college sports. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. From my partner, Brock Stewart, and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from Baton Rouge.